Yeah. So first, uh, congratulations on getting the, the position. I'm sure it's um, been, as I said, a whirlwind of, of a couple of hours, people congratulating, you know, reaching out and all that sort of thing. And, and I'm sure more interviews like this also have been requested as well. Um, so when I say you are the Bucks play-by-play -play TV announcer, kind of what, is that, what does that mean to you? It's, it's incredible. You know, who, who doesn't want to work for a championship type organization in this manner? And I am I am so grateful for the Bucks giving me this opportunity. I am super excited to get to know the coaches, the team, and, and maybe more importantly, the fan base. I, I sat and I, I watched the NBA finals and was blown away by the energy, the support, the excitement of this city, you know, rallying around their team. And so I, I've said, and I put it on social media today hey if you're a fan you see me in the community you see me at a game come say hi please because i want to meet you i want to feel that passion i want to be connected equally to the fan base as i am to the team in the franchise and i i can say as my first season here with milwaukee going through that playoff experience it was definitely quite a ride uh seeing it up close and, and you'll you'll certainly get a feeling of that too and you yourself you're a midwest person uh you know being from michigan yourself lived in chicago as far as i understand for for several years so what, what is it about this area? What was it about the position that kind of drew you in and, and, and wanted to uh, be a part of the, the Milwaukee Bucks? Well, the Midwest are the best kind of people, right? You know, we're, we're real, we're honest, we're hard workers. Um, I grew up in the state of Michigan. I went to school at Northwestern. I have frequented Milwaukee and the Pfizer Forum, you know, doing uh, different job activities, covering the Big Ten, covering the Big East. And so when I walked into the Pfizer Forum, my jaw dropped for the first time. And that was the first year that it had opened up. And I've been there in subsequent years. But I just connect to the city of Milwaukee, uh, much like because they're Midwest people, you know, and, and like I said, Milwaukee people are, are hard workers, they're blue collar workers, they're honest, um, they're genuine, they're passionate, they're everything that is part of me. And that's, that's the kind of person that I grew up being as well. And I saw that uh, several Marquette games uh, that, that you've called in, in the last couple of years, a lot of, a lot of games with Marcus Howard, so at least you won't be too lost walking around by sort of forum uh, pretty much at all, uh, kind of when you, when you get started next year. So with that, obviously you're, you're replacing a person who was there for 35 years, three plus decades uh, kind of in that position. Um, I know from being a Wizards fan and, they, and them losing their longtime broadcaster it can be a little jarring to the fans. So, so kind of what do, you, what do you think fans will expect when they actually hear you on the mic and actually start watching you do these games? Let me first say that, uh, you know, just a just a salute to Jim Paschke and the years that he's put in, the passion that he's put in and and his presence, his voice is always a part of Milwaukee Bucks history. It is my honor to take the baton now. And I just want to make sure that I, I say that, you know, I come at this from a broadcaster's perspective, but also as a former player and a former point guard's perspective. So my eyes are going to Drew Holiday first, you know, like I, I'm watching the game from a point, point guard's perspective. And maybe I, I noticed something a little bit different um, in, in that way, being a former player. But here's the other thing is um, I was a pass first, shoot second point guard. So I'm all about the assists. So I want to make Marcus Johnson look good. I want to make Zora Stevenson look good. I want to make our production team look good. I am all about getting more assists than points during a broadcast. And so the final thing is, you know, I have a reporter's heart as well. And I would love to tell the stories and, and showcase these players, maybe in a light that some of this fan base didn't know about. And, and we have access as, as a team broadcast to maybe connect those dots to this fan base and, and really make them feel like they know the players maybe in a different way. So those are the kind of things I hope that fans can appreciate about our broadcast. So with that, what is these next couple of weeks like for you? You know, training camp obviously is around the corner and, and the season itself is, is a month away. So what are these next couple of weeks uh, like for you? It's, it's just going to be a, a, a lot of box, 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 right? And, um, and I'll be there for media day. I'll be there for training camp. I can't wait to, to watch this team work. Um, we'll have preseason games coming up right around the corner. And so there's, there's zero time to breathe after this announcement, but that's okay. Um, I'm not a person that, that handles a whole lot of downtime in a great way. I would say so. You've certainly been very busy, uh, you know, since you were, or, or at least since I, I kind of was aware of you popping up on the scene with Big Ten Network and all that. Now, with this too, obviously there will be two women now on the broadcast. You'll be the first female TV broadcaster for for the Bucks and in, in this position, and really for for any team in this position. But we've seen all female broadcasts. MLB, the Raptors did one 
uh, this year as well. Where do you feel like it, what this says about women in the industry and women just in this position? I know you, you, you hate the, the, first, the first two, but you've done it multiple times now, but kind of what do you think it says just having this opportunity and, and being uh, the first one in this position? Well, we're making progress. And I, I think it's important for people to know I'm not the start or the finish of this story. It's just, it's it's a continuum. And, and let's not forget about the women and the men, right? Because men are equally part of this story, opening up doors, giving opportunities, making intentional hires. They're as equal a part of this story as women are. So the, the women and men of the past, uh, to this story here in the present, to all the open doors it's going to open up in the future. And I, I can't wait when this becomes background noise, right? When we stop trying to figure out who is the female announcer on a men's game, whether it's football or basketball or baseball or soccer. And think of how many times we've got a game on and it's background noise, but they're two male announcers and we don't think twice about it. We always stop when we hear a female on a men's game. And I don't know when that's going to happen. Maybe it's five years, maybe it's 10 years, maybe it's a generational change, but I can't wait for it to happen. And it only happens if hires like this happen. And, and with that, I know you have t-shirts that, uh, I want to say it's icon vibes t-shirts. You have that background noise as, as being one of the phrases and, and, and that's your hope of it. Just kind of having it in the background and no one really thinking about it. Um, so how does it feel to be a part of that, to be the, the, the first step or part of that step? I shouldn't say the first step. There's been obviously plenty of women on television in uh, TV type roles like this itself. But kind of how does it feel to be a part? You know, you just go about your job. That's how I have to do it. You know, you can't get you can't get suffocated by the history piece of it. I think that's for everyone else to talk about. But I will say this. I'm, I'm honored to be in a position where a little girl and also maybe more importantly, a little boy can sit and, and watch a Bucks game, an NBA game and realize, you know what, this isn't just a male's job or a man's job. Um, you know, I can do that too. And so if I can be a face or if I can open up a door for a little girl or open up the mind of a little boy, um, I am more than honored to do that because I know growing up, I didn't necessarily have those examples. And so I am honored to be given this opportunity and to be sitting in a seat where, where not many of those were given at the table for women. Well, I almost, I almost unmuted myself and then muted myself again always the trick um just a few more for you because i'm sure you've got plenty of other things uh, to, to do today but uh, i was watching an old interview and you said you wanted to be a lawyer or basketball coach growing up can you what do you think you would say to that young you now that you've um through decades of, of television work whether it was being a reporter or a studio host and now play by play and now the voice of a team uh, i guess just kind of what do you think you'd say to that younger self you as you've made this journey to this point you know, I, I would just kind of whisper to her and say, you know, what about broadcasting? Don't forget about broadcasting. Um, you know, I, I said lawyer and basketball coach because I saw women as lawyers and, and basketball coaches. And I hope there's another little Lisa out there that, that now sees this broadcaster doing the NBA. And now they think maybe not not just lawyer, doctor, basketball coach, but now broadcaster of the NBA. And, and, and that is why in true championship form, right? The, the Bucks, everybody's chasing the Bucks next year, um, that the Bucks took the lead in something like this as well. 